us a little bit to figure out what he was doing. Then all of a sudden we figured out, it's like, oh, he's going to try to do this. That's why his block is weird. That's why he's using his cart so weird. And then he drew it on the last possible turn before he was going to die. Killed him with, I believe, exact seeds. It was perfect. It was a thing of beauty that you don't get to see very often in Magic. So Steve Rubin, long story short, he can cast some spells. Todd Anderson can too. And we are underway here. Windswept Heath going to get a forest into an Elvish Mystic. Let's enjoy round at number 10. Being on the play with Man Acceleration bodes very well for Todd in these games because at least game one, Steve is not really equipped with ways to break serve. And the one of the weeks of weaknesses of Obzal Midrange is often in one spell a turn territory. So if Todd can get out in front, uh, Steve is going to be hard pressed to catch up. Looks like it's going to be the beatdowns here from Anderson. This is a Nykthos and just passing the turn back over to Ruben. Ruben with Jessus and Sep Citadel so far. That is a thought seize. Let's see what's going on over here. Not all the Obs on decks play this card, but Ruben has four. He'll see an Arbor Colossus, a Doom Wake Giant, along with an Eilana Blossoms, and just two lands. So Anderson has some interest in trying to cast his Eilana next turn. We'll see if Steve will leave that behind and let him. I have to imagine that it's Eidolon here because the other things are just creatures that can be killed. Does not really that matter that much if Todd's able to put random big stuff in play. Obs on mid-range is able to clear that off the table pretty easily. There goes the Eidolon. But Todd is running pretty good. He will draw by Delon, draw a card. It's a Voyaging Seder and pass the turn back over to Ruben. Ruben will draw a card. Nothing like the best possible draw. <laughs> it's a Temple of Malady. Always feels good. That, that never gets old. Well, you're not wrong. I haven't experienced it for a while. I don't get to play as much anymore. But I would be pumping the fist if I drew that that turn. You're, you got thoughts eased, your hand super exposed, and then you just rip the perfect card that they just took out of your hand? I could be playing Magic for 50 years and never get sick of that. <laughs> Doomwake Giant going to come in. That'll cantrip. Beat down to the Eidolon. Ruben will take two. He'll untap his three lands, and he'll draw a card. Does have a copy of Ramaz in his hand. Two of those in his main deck this weekend. Interesting. I, I do not believe a fixture of the Pro Tour deck. No, not at all. So an update. See Steve looking at a copy of Corsair of Crewfix in the hand as well. Might be considering playing that this turn. As round and round the players do go. Very powerful hand here, but if Todd's able to just generate a steady stream of enchantments, Steve is going to really struggle to keep his head above water. There's Corsair. Top card still can carry added. Windswept Heath going to come in. Ruben will trigger that. Gain a life. Pass the turn back to Anderson. He's going to quickly untap. It's time to draw a card. A Hornet Queen is what Todd has found. One copy in the list as a cord target. Todd again playing with three copies of cord. But really nice to draw this as a one of against Obzon, which struggles to beat this card once it resolves. Of course, they're in. Doomweight Giant Trigger, Eidolon Trigger. You see Todd flip over the top card, which was a Sylvan Carry added. That'll be his draw from Eidolon and Blossom. Top card now is a copy of Polucranos World Eater. And it is red zone time. The Eidolon can safely attack here as the Corsair on Ruben's side is a 1-3. Unlikely that Steve would be chump blocking the Doomway Giant anyway, but might as well. And if Todd does have some sort of follow-up enchantment, he could maybe get him. There's a block. Another Corsair, for example. Sure. There's a forest. Gain a life with the Corsair. Let's see what the follow-up is here for Anderson as he taps three mana. That is an Arbor Colossus through Nykthos, of course. Generating some mana there. Not a bad post-combat follow-up. I've seen worse turns. And all of this is a consequence of Todd just ripping that Eidolon on turn three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is looking pretty nice. There's a Planes there for Ruby. He's going to sacrifice that Windswept Teeth on the upkeep. Reason for that, of course, he does not want to draw that copy of Sylvan Carry added. The whole game was shaping up where, you know, that thought seize was Steve's way of making sure that Todd had to play at the same pace, that he had nothing to do with that mana acceleration. And that all got blown to bits. Ruben, going to take a look at the top cards. Copy of Murder's Cut. That will be his draw for the turn. So that's added to the grip. Top card, a copy of Utter End. So some removal spells being found here. You can see Steve a little bit frustrated, though. Not, not a great draw this game. And Todd's draw has been very good. And eventually, to catch up, Steve needs to find a way to start jamming two spells in a turn. Because he's not going to be able to keep up with Todd's board just casting one thing. Because also, the one thing that he casts is less powerful than what Todd's doing. There's an Obzon charm. Utter End. Corsair. Hero's Downfall. Yeah, he's going to concede the game. The plan there was... Obzon charm is the third card in his graveyard. 
he finds a land, he can play it with Corsair, gain a life, cast Murderous Cut. Exactly, and then he's in a position where he's made his fifth land drop, and maybe he can start getting the ball rolling a little bit. And I like that play because it gives him the best chance to win. Mm -hmm. I feel, you know, it looks bad if it doesn't work, right? It's like, oh, draw two cards, top card's a spell. You know, he could have just cast Murderous Cut that turn, but he's trying to win the game. Exactly, I think a lot of people in that, in that spot, their instinct would just be, I'll cast a removal spell. But he knows he's so far behind what Todd is doing at that point that he has to cross his fingers and hope to get a little bit lucky because it's not just about getting out of that turn, it's being able to flip the game around and try to win at some point, and he can only do that by trying to maximize his greed. It is time to take a look at the sideboards here. We will start with Steve Rubin, see a glare of heresy and a race and unravel the Aether, a Liliana Vest, two copies of Dune Blast, a murderous cut, three Drown and Sorrow, three Bile Blight, and two Nissa World Waker. I think Dune Blast is the easiest place to start. It, is, it changes the entire matchup. In game one, you saw Todd was able to just deploy his entire board without any hesitation. In post board, that becomes a lot harder. Now, these lists also often play end hostilities. There are none in Steve's list here, but Todd still has to respect that. And that's what makes things a little bit interesting as we're going to watch this game kind of unfold is if Todd does try to respect that card because we've seen players this weekend and previous ones play N hostilities in their main. Mm -hmm. We've also seen two of them in the sideboard. Two Dune Blasts, no N hostilities, additional removal, of course. Some nice options here for Ruben. What do we see on Anderson's side? Two copies of Brain Maggot, a Phyrexian Revoker, a Doomwake Giant, three copies of Missa World Waker, four Nightly's Disciples, two Hornet's Nest, a Hydra Broodmaster, and a Reclamation Sage. I like the two copies of Brain Maggot coming in here as, you know, he wants to pick apart Steve's hand, particularly the Sweepers. I think the three copies of Nissa World Waker are well suited here. Uh, maybe he wants to Revoker because Steve is going to be pretty Planeswalker heavy, though uh, none of the Planeswalkers seem especially good against Todd. And maybe the Reclamation Stage as well as a tutor target, and sometimes these lists have some Banishing Lights they bring in post-board, and you can always tag a Courser. These players will shuffle up for game number two. You guys may have seen that Patrick and I have our worm pins on our suits because, hey, SAG Game Night. Yeah, you can pick this up at your local store, assuming they're signed up for the Game Night program, which is pretty easy to do by heading over to StarCityGames.com or by contacting one of the numerous Star City Games OP reps. Again, this program initially launched as Wednesday night, but we've changed it. Run it however you want. Fun and friendly play at your local store, sanctioned or unsanctioned, whatever formats you want. This month for November, the giveaway is these worm tokens and the pin in question. We'll have a new kit every month. So if you want to get signed up for the December kit, make sure to head over to StarCityGames.com right now or contact one of Star City Games operation uh, organized play reps anytime during East Coast Standard Business Hours. Every week in November, Star City Games game night. Run whatever the heck you want. Just play some magic as we do get ready for game number two. Ruben will be on the play here. Todd Straw was explosive that last game. So we'll see if he can do that again. But you mentioned best possible was at Eidolon, and it turns out it was. Yes. Todd playing in the full four copies. You mentioned some people sort of moving away from having a lot of copies of this in the list, but against Obzon, it feels like one of the best cards Todd has. Players lay out their opening hands, and so we will be ready for action here in just a moment. Looks like Ruben may be happy with his keep again. Standard Open champion in Washington, D.C. Doesn't feel so long ago. He earned every bit of it that weekend. We'll see if he can win this match, work his way maybe towards a second title, as he will play a Sandstep Citadel. Anderson with a Temple of Malady. Take a look at the top card here. That top card's gonna stay on top. Back to Ruben we go. Ruben will draw a card. Copy of Temple of Silence. Top card, we'll see where it goes in just a moment here. It's to the bottom. Back Anderson's way. Nykthos is the draw. And Voyaging Seder is the play to Ruben we will go. He will play a forest. This is a Corsair of Crufix, and the top card is another Corsair of Crufix. It's Anderson. Draws a copy of Doomwake Giant. The openings to these games can be a little slow, but yeah. Todd may be able to break that open. Doesn't look like an idol on this time around. But it will be interesting to see how Todd elects to play this game as there's a Pelucranos. Because again, you don't know if he knows Steve Rubin's deck list, but you know he knows Steve Rubin. You know that Rubin built Ari Lax's deck that he won the Pro Tour with, and you know Todd knows that deck. He played it in Minneapolis. The question is, does Todd know about the absence of end hostilities? It's a big question. Because if he's only playing around Doom Blast, the game is very different than if he's playing around Doom Blast and end hostilities. Utter end, going to take care of Pelucranos. Two damage there from the Corsair. See the top card of Ruben's deck. It's a copy of Sylvan Carry added. There's a Corsair there for Anderson. Take a look at the top card. It's a Forest. He's going to put that in play. He'll go up to 21. We'll see the top card from Corsair here is a Voyaging Seder. 
And he'll play a Sylvan carry added. Pass turn back. So. Cave's going to come in. See the top card here from Ruben. It's a windswept heath. There is an Ajani on a relatively stable board, too. For sure. And keep in mind, it's also dangerous for Todd to press too much on trying to punch through a Planeswalker because he has to be worried about sweepers. Ruben misses with the Ajani, however. Let's see the top card now. It's a copy of Sylvan Carriata. That'll be his draw step for the turn. Anderson will draw a Voyaging Seder. Top card is a Forest. He will deploy the forest, gain a life, of course, up to 20. Top card is a forest. That'll be Todd's draw step next turn, most likely. Five, seven, maybe. It's interesting when you have to worry about a card like Dune Blast. And this is the one Hornet Queen he has in the list. A lot of these decks get really redundant with Hornet Queens post-board, but Todd just with the one. He's going to untap Nykthos after using it. Yeah, okay. He's shoving in. Yep. He's going to play everything. All the Voyaging Satyrs, Hornet Queen, lots of bees come in. And the thought process here, and we have seen Todd do this in Legacy mostly when we watch him play Sneak and Show. Todd's not afraid to just go, okay, play everything, and if you have it, you have it. If you don't, you don't. Can you really afford to play around and Hostilities and Dune Blast? It's pretty tough to do. Also, Steve, with a Planeswalker in play and five, six cards in his hand, if you try to wait too long, Todd might just lose to spot removal plus a Johnny generating too much card advantage. So I think Todd can sense that the, he's in danger. The game is not going at a very good pace for him right now. And trying to beat the board plus Steve's hand plus a theoretical Dune Blast is just not worth the effort. It takes a lot of courage to move in, but that's what he's going to do. Ruben going to take a look at his top cards. Elspeth among them. There's also a Siege Rhino there. And two Dune Blasts in the sideboard there for Steve Rubin. I'd be surprised if they weren't in his deck after sideboard. I mean, after the mirror match, this has to be the next matchup with that, that card in mind. There's an Elspeth. Top card, Temple of Malady. Steve has not played a land yet this turn, so he could play the one off the top of his deck if he'd like. Well, he passed on playing the land off the top of his deck initially, which means uh, I would. the only thing I can gather is he wants to play a land untapped out of his hand, or at least have the option of doing so. Anderson waiting patiently, hoping things don't go too badly. There is a temple. Take a look at the top card. Sansep Citadel going to the bottom. That's a Plains. That'll be the draw next turn. Steve going to tap some mana. He's going to add something to the board here. One thing to note here, too, is Anderson is working with some pretty good information because of the course. So he hasn't seen Dune Blast yet. Yeah. There is Sylvan Carry at it. And if they're hit with a Johnny, they go to the bottom. Mm -hmm. That's a Courser and passing the turn back. Ruben had a pretty comfortable 23, but his life total will begin to be under duress here. Though, to be fair, Anderson could go after the Ajani with Hornet Queen and her friends. So we'll see. As there is a Temple, trigger the Courser. A little scry action. Nykthos, don't need one of those. So that'll go to the bottom. Top card now is a Pelucranos. Hornet Queen. Looks like it's going to take care of a Johnny. So the Mentor of Heroes bites the dust. Back to when we go, though. Not a great turn there for Anderson. No, nope, not a lot to do. But has a Doomway Giant in reserve. So if he's leaning very heavily on Elspeth, Todd's got a great follow up. And a Polukronos waiting for Todd on the top of his deck. Top card is Elspeth for Ruben. He's already got one of those in hand. No Giant to activate. That died last turn. Did draw planes for the turn, so we know he's got a land to play. Snobs on charm. It looks like Ruben will be paying to draw cards. There is Dune Blast. Todd's going to write that one down. Yep. Though, who knows if there's much to be done about it. And see, that's the tough part about these wrath effects against devotion is you can know they're coming from a mile away. What can you do about it? Nothing. Well, especially if you try to pace the game, then you're just running into removal spells and siege rhinos and that kind of stuff. The only thing that the green and black deck can really do is try to overpower and that's really hard to do in the face of these sweepers back to anderson we go blue chronos the draw top card is nylon of blossoms that'll allow him to rebuild a little bit 
Doomway Giant plus Eidolon is a pretty reasonable base to rebuild from. I think the problem here for Todd is right now he's got so much mana, but after Doomblast moves everything away, he's back to one spell per turn territory. Yeah. You can see he knows he's in trouble. My opponent's Doomblast, man. I can't do anything about it. How do I work through it? And no deck plays better at one spell a turn territory in the format than Ob's on mid range. Yeah, that's so true. That is so true. We both have four and five mana stuff. Whose stuff is better? It's the Obzon's deck. Chances are. Anderson. He's got a Pelucranos lined up and the ability to activate it for a lot of mana. Keep in mind, three Voyaging Satyrs in play. With a Nykthos out there, he can go absolutely crazy. It looks like that's what he's going to do. And this way, it induces either a removal spell or makes some inroads on Steve's board. And this Pelucranos is not very valuable after the Doom Plast happens, because as you mentioned, Todd's down so much mana that it's just a 5-5 five, five for 4. Yeah, I think Todd is probably hoping, can I just clean all, you know, all these courses out of the way? Yep, fire away, fight those, kill them, and let me try to force through some amount of damage. I mean, it's not the best turn, but what this may do is just force the Dune Blast now. Maybe, maybe it wasn't forced before. Or you get a removal spell out of Steve's hand when he's going to untap and sweep you away anyway. Yeah. And both of these are okay. You might be happy with this exchange. Now, Steve does have, I believe, a copy of Murder's Cut in his hand. So but, Steve may respond. Sure, but uh, again, Todd's got to be happy with being able to do that because after the fact, after this Dune Blast happened, this Blue Kronos is not worth very much. Yep. Got it. You, know, you just got to do what you can do, I think, yeah. in this spot. That's good to go. There go the coursers. Steve thought about it for a little while. He says, that's fine. You can attack me. Todd may be trying to buy out a removal spell there. I think it's one of those spots where Todd's happy enough either way. Todd's already picked up his man accelerants. He's picking up Lucas now. He knows that Doom Blast is going to clear everything up except, except for, excuse me, Sylvan Carry added. See if Ruben has anything else to do this turn. There's a land. Has Murders cut at the ready. Mana available through Sylvan Carry added. Just going to pass the turn back over to Anderson, who's going to untap and draw. There's Eidolon of Blossoms. It's time to rebuild. Nick those the draw. There's a forest. All he can do is pass the turn back. And another issue going forward here is Steve's draw is just pound for pound or so much better. Mm -hmm. Spot removal spells are just cards that are productive on their own. And Todd's going to be drawing a lot of mana creatures and things that are sort of asking for the board to look a certain way. And he's got a lot of cards left in his hand, too. That's the scary part. There's Elspeth. There's a Sylvan Carry. Added three soldier tokens coming. Ruben looks like he may be running away with this one. There's a Doomway Jai in Anderson's hand. Ruben does know about that. Saw from the thoughts he's earlier. There that is. That'll clear away those. Anderson will play a land. Pass it back. Todd's going to play out the stretch here, but uh, this one's all but done. Hey, you can pick up info in situations like this. Still plenty to learn. Elspeth's going to take down, takes care of Doomwake Giant. Ruben will just pass the turn back. Anderson draws a forest. He'll play that, kick it back over to Ruben, who will draw a card. He's got his other Doom Blast in his hand. Another Elspeth as well. Mm -hmm. Anderson's draw was an Elvish Mystic. He will deploy that. I think Todd may know in this situation that he's beat. Can't overcome Elspeth. Not the first one defeated by the Sun's champion. And Steve also still with six cards in hand or yeah. something like that. Doesn't have, to, doesn't have to cast any of them. He can. He doesn't have to. Anderson going to draw a card. There are a couple of lands. He knows he's beat. He's going to pack it up and pack it in. Steve Rubin going to tie things up here against Todd Anderson. Ob's on mid-range and green-black devotion headed to game number three. And you saw Todd flip over kind of the lands at the end of the game and a little bit of frustration, but I think after that Doom Blast occurred, even if Todd got to, you know, stack his deck, I think he still might have struggled to win. It's tough because, again, you know that they have access to these mass removal effects and you can do nothing about it. You have to hope they don't draw it. Yeah, Todd shoved. He gave himself the best shot. I mean, if Steve doesn't find the Doom Blast there, 
reasonable chance Todd's able to win the game on the back of Hornet Queen. Yeah. But he definitely can't win trying to pace his threats and running into a sea of murderous cuts and obs on charms and heroes downfalls. He's got to do what his deck can do best and hope that Steve misses his very few answers to that. That game he didn't. We'll see if it happens here in game number three as we will take a look at our 2015 Open Series schedule. We're almost done with 2014 here. 2015 season one has been announced. It's going to be a cold start, but oddly enough, we're going to start it right back here in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, to be exact. Come back to this convention center, I would assume, and then we move to Philadelphia the following week. After that, we have a week off, if I recall correctly. We deserve it. We do deserve it. I think we've earned it. Wouldn't you agree? And then Indianapolis, then Indianapolis the following weekend in Washington, D.C., I've almost got this memorized by I now. I know you do, but we're going to heat up after that. Houston, yeah. regionals, Los Angeles. Oh, my God, look at you go. And then the week in between Los Angeles and... I believe in you. I believe in you. Ooh. So, yeah, Columbus, Philly, D.C., and D. I You're got four the, for four. And then it is weekend off Houston, L.A., Baltimore. Baltimore. That's the one I always forget. That's Baltimore, right. Grand Prix, Miami, then Dallas, and then the Season 1 Invitational in Richmond. Spoiler alert. I won't be in Baltimore. You will not? I will not. My brother's getting married that weekend. Congratulations to you and your brother and the rest of your family. That's great news. Spoiler alert. And Baltimore is like one of my top five stops in the Open Series. I love Baltimore. I'm a big you fan. Love it. You love it because of the noodles and company. That has nothing to do with it. I love it because when we are there in the winter, the view of the Inner Harbor is beautiful. It's a delight. Yep. It certainly is. The Domino Sugar Factory off in the background. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It's great. Baltimore is a... Baltimore is a good city. I will be in Mexico for the first time. I'm looking forward to that. Whereabouts? Uh, outside of Cancun, apparently, on some island. Okay. Don't know the name of it, but my brother has assured me that it is nice, and I will have a great time. Awesome. So that's where I will be. I've also not been to Mexico yet, even though I'm, you know, about an hour north of the border. Yeah, I've never been either. That's the first time for everything. First time for me missing a Baltimore show. Yeah. Makes me sad. I love the Baltimore show. So many awesome players come out. Anderson on the play this game. We'll see if he keeps his starting hand. Ruben going to send it back. Todd's going to keep his. I think for Anderson, because the sideboard games are really tough, that's step number one. He's got to get a little lucky here. Yeah, and I think uh, Todd has to keep hands that are a little sketchier. He has to ignore the presence of sweepers. He has to be more willing to bluff to the extent that his deck allows him to. I mean... The deck is all creatures, lands, and three court of calling. So not, <laughs> yeah. not a lot of room to bluff. But yeah. with that said, he's got to give it his best shot. So we saw what happened. He gave it his best punch. But Doom Blast was too much for him to overcome. And you can see the post-board games playing out that way over and over again. There's only so much you can do. You know, but you just try and... You know, it, it's weird to say that he's got he's got to try to get a little lucky, but that's a real thing in some matchups where the matchup is pretty difficult. It's just like, well, I, you know, I hate to say it, but opponent, I, I do hope maybe you mulligan once and maybe your draw doesn't come together appropriately, and that's how you have to beat you. I felt that way playing a lot against Black Devotion last year with Mono Red. I felt like I'm going to get game one, there, and then they're going to have to have Drown and Sorrow twice to beat me games two and three. I'm not going to play around it unless it's so obvious or I, I have the luxury of doing so. Yep. And I'm going to ask them to have it twice. And if they do, good beats. Yep, happens. But And now Ruben's going to take another mulligan here. So, again, this is the kind of fortunate thing that needs to happen. In what And and even though this is happening right now, there's no guarantee that Todd even wins this game. Yeah. You know? But I will say, this is a spot, this mulligan to five is, where the absence of end hostilities is really punishing. Yeah. Because getting to seven mana is much more challenging than getting to five when you're depleted on these resources. Night and day. Ruben's going to shuffle up here yet again as he's on a mulligan to five right now. Never a good time to do it, but certainly not now. So our standard open champion, when we were in Washington, D.C., is going to try to cobble something together. It's looking tough right now, though. A good trip out here for Todd. So far, if he gets this one, chances are I'll be able to draw next round, be in elimination rounds with buddy Tom Ross. Gets more open series points. He is definitely on the outside looking in right now for the Players' Championship, but we know he's going to be at every event as now Ruben is going to take a mulligan to four. So that thing that you were saying about you just got to hope to get lucky. Look, it's all part of it. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. It yeah. really is. Anyone who's won a Pro Tour will tell you. 11 round, 11 round standard open. You gotta, there's some things have to break you your way. You gotta catch some breaks. That's just the truth of it. You know, I think of that moment, Chapin playing and Josh early in the top four of uh, Pro Tour Journey to Knicks, where I think Josh had thought seized him and saw his hand and saw that Chapin didn't have like the necessary land to call Swiss, to get Swiss main line. And then Chapin draws the necessary land, the crowd goes crazy. Chapin's trying to hide back a smile and utter late and hears the crowd go crazy. And he's like, ah, you, I can't believe it. <laughs> and it's like, look, sometimes you catch some breaks. That's just the reality of it. You're gonna win a tournament. You're gonna catch some breaks on the way. Now, I say this understanding Steve is on four cards. But he does have a murderous cut and a doom blast. And I believe he may have a courser as well. And if that's the case, that's about the best four card hand you can ask for. Anderson gonna draw a card. I want blossoms is what he's just found. There's a forest. This is curving out. There's Nylon. Trigger draw a card. It's a forest kick the turn back. Ruben will draw a card. Here's Courser. Take a look at the top. It's a stance up Citadel. And there are lands here. Anderson will draw a card. He's drawing a few of them, too. However, there's a second item line. Trigger, trigger. Hit one, hit two. Nick those in a forest. There's a temple. Take a look at the top card. That's staying on top very quickly. No good attacks past the turn back. Ruben will draw a stand flip citadel. That's a planes. Steve's going to get to play a little bit of magic this game, I, I think. I think so, too. There is a planes. He goes up to 21. Take a look at the top card now. Drown in sorrow. Okay. That'll play. I mean, it's a game. Obzon Charm in hand. Anderson, draw. Blue Kronos. Issue here for Todd. He's got a lot of lands in his hand. He has, I mean, he gets a very land heavy opening to begin with. When we talk about catching breaks, Steve Rubin's not doing so bad. Looking at Oz on Charm, the question is, how does he want to use it? Kill Pelucanos or perhaps draw some cards? Well, it depends if he thinks he can kind of win this game straight up or if he just needs to get to Doom Blast anyway. If he, if he feels he just has to go to Doom Blast first, then I just like drawing some cards. Look, because his, he, look at his life total. If he thinks so he, high. I know. If he, can play, if he thinks he can play straight up, then I like just drawing some cards here. There's the charm. The alternate to this is because he's drawing a Drown in Sorrow, he also just keeps the board clean, a Courser in play. Mm -hmm. That's going to help him find some cards and some mana. There's the Drown. Bye-bye Eidolon. Drown's going to go to the bottom very quickly. Take, so, take a look at the top card. He's on no, no pressure to do that. There's land number five. We know he has land number six in his hand. Let's see what the top card is now. Siege Rhino. There's an attacker. Court of calling the draw here for Anderson. And also, remember, Todd is not aware of the Doom Blast. He knows it's in the deck, but he's not working with any information. We saw last game that he just shoved. His hand is pretty bad, mm -hmm. very land heavy, and he may make the same risk reward assessment that he made last game. And if he does, I think Steve's got the tools to get the Doom Blast with a board. In spite of a four-card hand. His draws with Eidolons were not great. A couple of lands came rolling off, kept a little bit of a land-heavy hand. Draw steps for Anderson, not great this game. But he can't complain too much. His opponent didn't look into four, after all. As you said, whatever happens, happens. Yeah. And hey, that's why they play the games, yeah. you know? If I'm looking four, it's not over. And you will note between these two players. For Ruben, the Mulligans were quick. There, were no, there was no, ugh, blah, blah, blah. I can't believe this is happening right now. None of that. And for Anderson, no pumping of the fist when the Mulligans are taking place. Both these players have been playing competitive magic for a very long time. This is why they play the games. There's a forest. There's a voyaging satyr. Anderson will pass the turn back over to Ruben. He's drawing a siege right off for the turn. Top card, stands up Citadel. That's land number seven. Citadel's going to come in. Temple of Silence, the next card. You can see Steve's his motion's a little bit faster. He's, he's engaged now. I think he can also sense that he's got a real shot of winning this game. There's an attack. Block. There's the Rhino. Steve may be trying to 
Sneaking some damage there, acting as though he has knobs on charm. That's a great, I mean, that's a great attack too. Also, Drowning Sorrow. Yeah. If Todd, you know, blocks and Drowning Sorrow is the follow-up there, Todd loses everything. He might not care because his hand's so land heavy, but no reason not to attack. Anderson Shaw, a copy of Polyprodos. There's a land for the turn. Just incredible to watch. Just enough positive things have happened for Steve and enough kind of bad breaks along the way have occurred for Todd that in spite of seven cards against four to start, we've got a real game. There's Pelucranos. Anderson will pass the turn back. Ruben. We'll untap those lands. Tempo Silence to draw. Top card is a copy of Hero's Doubtfall. And a very nice follow-up to have if your plan is to get the Doom Blast. We can't forget about the Murderous Cut over there, too. Yep. He hasn't even needed to cast it yet. Those mass removal effects, Drown in Sorrow and Doom Blast, have been huge and in Steve, this matchup. Steve electing not to play Temple of Silence that turn because he knows he wants to draw the Hero's Downfall anyway. Yeah, so why play it? Yep, save it for when there's a card on top you don't want. Steve going to take a moment here, figure out what can I do maybe to hook in more with the Drown in Sorrow. Do I use the Murderous Cut now or later? Do I attack with Siege Rhino? Yes, no, maybe so. He's going to go reaching for some mana here. It's five. Maybe not. I guess he can open up with just attacking with the Siege Rhino because if his plan is to murderous cut the Pelucanos anyway, he can always do that after blocks. Mm -hmm. And get all the trample damage through. Exactly. Looks like he's going to go this route. Murderous cut there. Full price. We don't see it played for five mana often, but we will right now. Not the best deal at full retail, but who cares, right? Pretty much. <laughs> Response here. Gonna activate the Nykthos again. So Anderson generating some mana. Looks like it may be for Court of Calling. Yes. Let's see what he's searching up. Well, this was Todd's real ace in the hole here to be a follow-up post-sweeper. Farika. All right. Farika's pretty nice here. Farika is pretty nice. I think he had a mana floating, too. Yep. Gonna make a Death Touch creature. Okay. Gives him a lot of resistance against the Dune Blast. He's got some fight left in him. Yep. This is a great hedge by Todd. If he's allowed to develop his board, this Farika is going to be great down the line. And if something bad happens, well, then he's got plenty of fodder in his graveyard. He could probably block for a really long time, give himself the opportunity to draw out of it. You got to say, he's giving himself a shot. He's got two lands in his hand. And pass the turn back. And not a lot of ways for Steven to get a Farika off the table. I think he's got one other end. Mm -hmm. And he's already he's already played it this yeah, game. Yeah. Oh, he hasn't played this game, this last game, excuse me. That he killed a Pluginos with it. However, the draw here is even more interesting. It's a copy of Nyssa. So there is that. Now, Hero's Downfall, of course, staring Anderson right back in the face, but whatever. Let's suit it up. And I think we might be entering a stage of the game here. I would imagine Steve's going to answer the Nissa this turn, where both players are going to be in a holding pattern. Steve can't Dune Blast that productively at this spot because the Farika is too much of a leftover. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's, there's not much for Todd to be gained by advancing his board because he's got plenty to work with already. This game just got a whole lot more interesting. Nissa will change things a little bit, you have to imagine. Siege Rhino is the top card of the deck. The one card that Todd doesn't know that's in Steve's hand. The one card is Dune Blast. That's it. 
but I think Todd's line of play is such that he's trying to give himself the most play against it that he can. He's gonna, it's just really, it's so interesting because he's gonna know every other, he know, he's gonna know every other card because Corsair's in play. He's gonna know every card except for maybe the best one in the situation. But it's gotta be the top card on his radar. Yep. And Steve's been so contemplative on his turns here that, uh, you know, it, it, yes, it could be a bluff, it could be body language, but he's thinking so hard about using a removal spell on Pelucranos when if Doom Blast wasn't in his hand, that seems pretty straightforward. You know, you just kill the 5-5. Five -five. I think Todd is aware of what is going on right now. There's the hero's downfall. Anderson's gonna untap. It's a draw. That is a Voyaging Seder. Attack with the 1-1. One -one. The real tension here too is how many snakes is he supposed to make and when? When does he make his move? Well, he needs to leave himself enough of a graveyard that if he gets swept, he's got a follow-up. But one point a turn is not great. Mm -mm. At this point, it's like Steve didn't even mulligan to four at all. We're yeah. just playing the game as it is right now. There's a wind swept to you. Top card, Sylvan Carey added. Got a siege round out of cast and Doom Blast and Grip. For Steve, the question now is, when you cast your Doom Blast, do you play Siege Rhino this turn? Because your Doom Blast is probably going to sweep it away. Well, I don't think he can't. The second Siege Rhino does not allow him to attack or block more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So I don't think there's a lot to be gained by deploying it. And the, But the fact that he drew it and said, all right, I'm not casting it. Yes, he could be trying to set up a Doom Blast. Maybe he draws down the line, but... It's got to be a bit of a tip-off. I think that if you ask Todd to make a friendly wager on whether or not Doom Blast was in Steve's hand right now, he would wager that it is. Yeah. Gonna sacrifice the windswept teeth. Go get a planes, of course. Lose a life and then gain a life from the courser. Didn't want to draw the Sylvan Carry added. Let's see what Ruben's gonna draw this turn instead. It's a courser. That'll be the draw. Now it's Sansa Citadel. That'll come into play. Trigger the courser up to 27. Take a look. Temple of Silence. And Anderson knows every card that Ruben has seen, except for the Doom Blast in hand. Todd's not even making a second snake. Nope. Won't even give him that. Draws a card, Courser. Take a look at the devotion count with Farika in play. Right now it's five, Courser makes it seven. Top card, Voyaging Seder. You saw Todd leave the fetch land in play for multiple turns, just in case something like this does happen. He'll sacrifice the windswept teeth, go get a force out of his deck, shuffle up. We'll see what the top card is here in just a moment. But if Farika gets to the requisite devotion, that might be the moment that Steve's hand is forced. There's a forest. Elvis Mystic, not the best draw. I think Steve was happy to take a point of damage a turn. Less happy to be taking six. Yeah, six is a lot more than one, and I think yeah. this, this forces the action. Steve's giving some thought. Yeah, that mulligan a four part of the game, well, that's over now. Now we're playing Magic. Steve's going to take the six. Looks like he's going to go down to 20. Top card, Windswept Teeth coming in. Trigger from the Courser. Manic Influence. Imagine fetch, fetch lands are powerful. Imagine that will get shuffled away momentarily. Yep. Still looking at the Dune Blast. You know, maybe he's trying to set up a turn where he just goes Dune Blast plus Siege Rhino in the same turn. Yes. Maybe that's what it feels like. It's the alternate line of play instead of just snapping it off right now. Got 10 mana in play. Elvish Mystic the draw. I of Blossoms. Good card to refuel with. Attack you for six again. Yeah, I'm sure Todd is thrilled to see that on the top of his deck right now. We're going to sacrifice Windswept Teeth. He'll lose one and then gain one. Look at him go. Two great players doing battle. And back and forth, this is gone too. I would oh, say, yeah. I would say right now, Todd has a slight edge. It's so hard to say who the favorite is right now. Heroes down for the top card. That might swing things. Mr. Rhino, will you be blocking? Yes. 
Kyle says, yeah, get that thing out of here. All right. Now the odds that he's getting Doom Blasted are 100%. <laughs> Before we were only a little bit north of 99%. Yeah. Now we're at 100. Not going to pass the turn back. He's not playing to that anymore. Here's downfall to draw. Oh, no. Elspeth's the next one. He couldn't miss forever. Tapping seven. Blasterino. Ty going to float a little bit of mana here so that he can refuel. Yep. And, and he's got a, got a little, a lot of little critters that are going to the graveyard now that everything's getting swept up. Yep. Going to float a bunch of mana so that Freak can get to work. Keep in mind, too, you see the Eidolon of Blossoms on the top of the deck for Anderson. He's also got two creatures in his hand. So Freak's Devotion could be met again pretty quickly here. Mm -hmm. Both life totals pretty high, so we got a lot of game to play. But Doom Blast's going to clear everything away. And now Anderson's going to have to activate Freak before the mana is gone. So we'll see how many Death Touch snakes he gets here in a moment. You see, we're only 10 minutes in the match. Don't want this one to come down to time. Three, four. Four Death Touch snakes in. Still plenty of fuel left in the graveyard. Yeah. The draws the Eidolon. We know that. You have to imagine that's where he's going to lead out. So there's Eidolon. Draw a card. Play that. There's the attack. A couple of critters. Pass it back. We get Eidolon that neat interaction with the snakes come back because they're enchantments. Exactly. I think Steve needs to kill this if he doesn't have another sweeper. Me too. But we know, we know he has heroes downfall in his hand. Exactly. But uh, this is a spot where Steve, for all the work that Todd's done and all the advantages he's accrued, Elspeth might undo all of it. There's Sylvan Carry added. Temple, trigger, gain a life, scry, top to the bottom. Carry added's going to go away. Mana Confluence is the top card. That'll be the draw next turn. Can Todd slog through this? Elevators going up. Three soldier tokens coming in. And Steve's looked at so many cards. Keep in mind, there's a second Doom Blast in this deck. And I think if he finds that, that is going to end, uh, end Todd. What's Todd's draw? Didn't get a great look. Definitely a spell. He's going reaching. Doomwake might be the best one right now. Looks like we're in the draw step. I think yeah. Todd is trying to make a snake right now. Yep. It looked like we're in the draw step, and that's when he's hero downfalling. Yeah. So this is, he's going to bottleneck Anderson's mana a little bit here. He's going to make a snake, of, and that's going to cantrip the Eidolon. So that's one. It's like he's going to do it again. That's two forest. Bye-bye, Eidolon. Farika, looking real good this game. Hard to imagine Todd having any game against this Doom Blast without this Singleton core target. The tough part here is now will he attack? Because attacking doesn't really accomplish a lot against against Elspeth. We know that. Well, it it does prevent Steve from being able to just race to an emblem and start threatening Todd. Mm -hmm. Because Todd is, you know, for all the card advantage he's generating, he's still sort of just kind of spinning around a little bit. There's your attack. Some creatures will die. And Todd, they're willing to basically chump attack with the Elvish Mystic because it puts another creature in the graveyard, which is another snake. He's trying to run down Elspeth right now, I think. Because Elspeth's down to three. He's just trying to figure out some way to slog through and get it off the table. Because it's causing too much of a problem. It's going to go up to four. You saw Manic Influence to draw Corsairs on top. We know there's a big dumb rhino over there. There's a land. Electing to go with that instead of the temple. Maybe a little surprising. It's either big plans for the mana or he wants to draw a courser. Yep. There's the rhino. That's going to come in. Little drain, little gain. Back Anderson's way we're going to go. Can he keep working through this? Ruben will pass it. Anderson will draw. 
It's a copy of Atlanta War Waste, not what the doctor ordered. And now the plan, as you called it, of running down Elspeth is not happening. It's going to have to involve Doomweight Giant. It's not getting any easier. I'll say that. Anderson just going to pass the turn back. Ruben will draw the courser. Top card is a copy of Windswept Heath. Heath going to come into play. Trigger the courser up to 22. Take a look at the top card. It's an Obzon Charm. That's a doozy as well. Elspeth's ticking up. I was on term a creative answer to Farika, yeah. mind you. The draw? Pelucranos. Todd not really working with that substantial of a devotion count right now. The Pelucranos will put him up to five. He is a Voyaging Seder. I mean, he's got a lot of mana. He can get a little bit interesting with it. He's got a land to play. And he sort of needs to do it now because next turn Steve draws the Obzon Charm and mm -hmm. then that line is cut off. He can generate a decent amount. He's hoping there's no response to Monstrosity, but again, he knows all the cards. All the draw steps. Yeah. So he's working with great info. And now, is Todd going to be able to get to this Elspeth? He's got to get that stupid thing off the board. He's going to make a bunch of mana. It's a lot of fighting. Yep, he says, get all these out of here. Farika's on line, red zone. If Steve tries to protect it, he's going to lose some stuff. Yep. Blucrinos may have been the best draw there. Well, he can he can chump block here, follow two tokens on the Elspeth, untap, kill the Blucrinos, make three tokens, and then uh, Steve is back to doing okay. I mean, Steve is loath to trade any of his creatures for a snake. You yeah. can tell he's trying to do avoid that at all costs. The draw, windswept Heath going to come in. He saw Obzon Charm, the actual draw for the turn. Utter end. That is the card that Steve needs to yep. finally get out of this Farika. Now, he does have, again, Obzon Charm to, to kill the Farika if he'd like to. Utter end does it as well. So now he's found some ways to get it off the table. Yep. Three soldiers. Under three minutes. Perhaps it's time to Obzon Charm now. And for as powerful as Plukonos is, it is just a big dummy. That can be chum blocked all day long. Mm -hmm. The risk, and Steve's got to be contemplating this as well, is there is a copy of Nylea in Todd's deck. Yep. He's going to draw two cards. Utter End looks like it may be played right now. See you later, Farika. And there's a Siege Rhino. So. Steve, not even trying to play around the Nylea at this point, not going to leave a removal spell, just drawing as much as he can. Remember, there's still a Doom Blast left in his deck, yep. and that's the big prize. If he can find that, Todd's going to be very hard-pressed to win. A land for Anderson. Not what he was looking for. He's looking for Nylea. He's looking for Cord. He's looking for something that does something. That's not it. Anderson's going to attack. An easy chump block there. Sacrifice the windswept teeth, Will Rubin. He's going to go searching very quickly as we are just under two minutes here, I believe. And the game has gone on, the game has gone on for so long that Steve has run out of lands to fetch for. Top card. A race. Rubin will untap. He'll draw the erase. We believe he could sacrifice the one so teeth that's in play if he'd like, as we have one minute to go here in round 10. A race is really nice insurance against Nylea. Yeah. Doomway Giant, too. Yup. I would be hard pressed to pass it up versus a random draw step. It would be difficult. Yep, he will take a race. Top card, Courser. Up we go.
five soldiers out there now for Elspeth. And the Rhino's feeling pretty tough. I like these attacks. It's a gotta, lot of damage. Got to try to clear clear the game up. 21 seconds and counting. Yep. Uh, Steve is not going to have enough time to get to an Elspeth emblem, so this is the next best thing he can do. Yep. Anderson's going to have to do some blocking now. Some interesting blocks here. Getting creative. Doesn't want to take a lot of trample damage. Yeah, he's trying to just absorb as much as he can. Now, we do have confirmation on exactly where the time is at. These players have three extra minutes. Mm -hmm. Try to finish things up. There is, there is a huge, huge draw from Todd. The bees. The Hornet Queen. Yes, sir. Brings along four flyers with it. That's finally a way to take care of this Elspeth. That's the big prize here is just getting that Elspeth off the table. Lucranos red zone. Block. Yes. Pass. Ruben going to sacrifice his fetch land. No land to search up. He'll shuffle. Just looking to shuffle. Trying to find a Doom Blast. Two minutes and change. Timely top deck for Anderson. He's got some big draws available in his deck still. Another Pelucanos isn't so bad. Nylea's not so bad. Doomweight Giant. Yep. Sylvan Carry added, not what Ruben's looking for. Top card, Liliana Vess. Oh, oh boy. Liliana does allow him to tutor for the Dune Blast. Yeah. But that is a slow burn. Elspeth going to take up. No good attacks here for Ruben, so Anderson's going to untap, draws a card. Elvish Mystic. Windswept Heath in hand as well. Keep in mind that as much as we're getting hung up on Todd trying to whittle down these Planeswalkers, he's also got to leave enough back on defense and not just get hit by, you know, killed by something like attack you all my Elspeth tokens, untap attack you all my Elspeth tokens, because Todd's not really in a position to generate lethal as long as Steve is careful about the... Palukano is hitting for too much. Mm -hmm. Hornet Queen and Friends will take down Elspeth. There's an Elvish Mystic past the turn back. He does have to have that balance. What makes it interesting is you have to imagine these players don't have much time left in the match. They don't have time to think through their decisions as much as they would like, I imagine. Yeah, you got to make a play. Hope it's right. Yep. Liliana the draw. You know Steve got a race. You see the murders cut on top of the deck. Steve going to take a look at his graveyard. Now he's trying to figure out what he's going to Liliana vest for. He's taking a look at his sideboard. He wants to make sure he doesn't make some sort of glaring error. Better safe than sorry. Yeah. Better do it quickly, though. Seeing what blocks Anderson does have available. Remember that he can always leave the carry added back on defense to chump block the Pelucranos. Mm -hmm. And that's safe. The only risk there is Nylea. So... If Steve is in a position where he's trying to play towards Dune Blast, he can be pretty aggressive attacking with stuff this turn, trying to get in some shots against Todd. Yeah, he's going to tutor. <laughs> you see, a Johnny is one of the cards that he's brought forward. You see, Wingmate Rocks going through the deck. Siege Rhino Drown in Sorrow is an option. Steve has such a little deck left. That's how long we played. Yep. So. Drown and Sorrow is the weapon of choice. Interesting stuff. And now we're going to see some aggression here. Turn number one here of extra turns. This is Steve's sort of last, although I think that it's, it's possible Steve should have, I understand the game's super complicated, maybe made the attacks first and then 
found whatever he was going to find with Liliana. Potentially, yeah. I mean, it, as you said, it's super complicated, right? If the end result is Steve's going to hang back on D, then it's, you know, whatever. That's fine. Also, he gets one chance, Liliana, right? Yeah. He's got one shot to get it right. And he went with Drown and Sorrow instead of Dune Blast or a card like a Johnny, even though he considered the other options. There goes Liliana. Turn number two of extra turns. One swept teeth going to pass the turn back. Drown and Sorrow's the draw. Temple of Plenty. Bye bye, Lanamore Waste. Hobbs on Charm. There's Drown. Lots of stuff going to die here. And Ty going to lose just about everything except for the Blue Cross. I feel like Steve took a line here to do his best effort to play for the draw. Wow, Genesis Hydra was the draw. Wow. Maybe a turn or two too late. Yeah, that's incredible. Of all the cards we were talking about, the Taka draw, that was one of the few we didn't even mention that would have been completely busted. There's only two copies in his list. Normally this is a four of, or at least of the list that I've seen recently, but. And this is going to reveal a ton of cards, obviously. I had a lot among them, another Pelucranos, Nyssa, Corsair, Cord, Temple. Lana War Waste, Temple, Elvish Mystic. One of those cards that it's not is Nylea. Windswept Heath's big. And even still, this is just Todd's last turn, so. What a back and forth game this was. No kidding. For a mulligan of four for Steve Rubin, Dune Blast, the top so card. So who, of the even, deck. Know, who it, even It's knows. hard to say who would even win this game. Right. I mean, this is. With an infinite amount of time, it's hard to say who would even win this game. There's Obzon Charm, and Steve has been using that so much to draw cards. So he's going to draw Doom Blast. He'll draw Hero's Downfall. Top card is Wingmate Rock. <laughs> well, this is one of those things where, you know, Todd might have been trying to do like, oh, look how much stuff I can do this turn. I was yep. probably going to win. And it's still not clear after the thousandth turn of this going back and yep. forth. And it looks like those players are going to draw. We'll get an official.